guys, welcome back to uh, Higurashi. Higurashi, Higurashi, Higurashi. I had a restless night's sleep, then nothing but turn over repeatedly during the night. It seemed like it lasted for eternity, even though I eventually fell asleep at some point, not realizing how high in the sky the sun had risen. I shook off the urge to go back to sleep. It was then I noticed that the phone was ringing. The time was almost half past ten in the morning. It was clearly too late for a wake-up call. Akasaka-san, good morning, it's Oishi. <laughs> Waking up to the sound of Oishi's voice was a little too much of a shock. My delicate ears were ringing. But the thanks to that shock, I was suddenly wide awake. Uh, hello, good morning. Uh, could it be you just woke up? Even though you're on assignment, it's still not good to be asleep during regular business hours. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I'll be more careful in the future. I have another uh, tidbit that might wake you up even more. There was something interesting mixed in with the lost and found at the end of the police box. Lost and found? Let's leave the details for you get here. You think you'll be able to make it before noon? No, I'll be there right away. I wish you already knew what my mission was. Since I you said it was something that wouldn't wake me up, it was hard to believe that it would be irrelevant to me. Honestly speaking, judging by the information, from Sato said yesterday, knowing that my cover was already blown, I couldn't wander to and from him myself carelessly. In the worst my investigation was at an impasse. If there was some information that could be putting me back on the trail, that would be nothing less than a stroke of good fortune. After vigorously washing my face, I pulled on my jacket and held a taxi heading towards the Okinomiya police station. Oh, we are here. The genius Mojang player has arrived. My apologies for being late. So exactly what popped up. Absolutely no attention for a minute saying about last was a Mozart game. I pressed on to get to the point. I wish she had disciplined and I would act that way because of the chase without any assistance. Like I said earlier, it's been arrived and there several police boxes lost the found this morning. Last items I were turned over to the police box were sent to Okan Okanomiya police station until the paperwork was filled out. Oh, she pulled out a plastic bag from a drawer and laid his labels content on the desk. And is that a wallet? Indeed, there was a small change inside by no bills. We thought that a pickpocket threw it away after pulling out the contents at first. I didn't understand how his wallet so far and moved to Tokyo could possibly be related to, to the kidnapping. If it had John and Jesus' attention, it would have to be such a matter like if the wallet belonged to the missing grandchild. That would be absurd. This would explain the convenient would happen. If that was it, then there's probably initials written on the wallet, like the initials of Toshiki and the guy that knows the screen something T.I. Thinking like that, the point is, I suppose it's wallet or something that could get Oishi so excited. Or if they're putting on a pair of disposable plastic gloves, handing me a pair of the same. And I felt that this wallet was such an important thing, so I had my doubts whether about whether this was any point on putting on gloves. However, I didn't want Oishi's attention to go away, so I put them on. Oishi pulled up the plastic bag and pulled it out, showing me the bag. As I imagined, no initials engraved there, but it was something more detailed than what I thought the Toshiki I am marked on it. Oishi grinned at me to look on his face that said, See, we can't confirm that this blocks with the readers as good as how they formed a cobbly. This wallet was irrelevant, and it's not that one in Oishi's over eagerness. First of all, there was absolutely no way in this distant local with the Mrs. Grand's own wallet would be found with such a convenient timing. I told that Omega Fuji Defense Alliance was not related to the case in the first place. So there's no way this wallet belongs to the grandson. Why I wanted to decide that this was the case, even though I didn't really know. Even though that should have been a top secret case was leaked before I even had been dispatched. In this situation, how could I say this was differently unrelated? Would it be more prudent to pay more attention to this wallet? It only been a couple of days since I arrived in Kinemazawa, but in those couple of days, due to the number of remarkable events, my nerves might have become a little just a little fright. Shaking my head slightly, I've cleared up with unnecessary thoughts. I wish you opened the wallet zipper, revealing the contents. Inside was some odd change in the number of couple receipts. I wish you for that jumble pulled out a folded card. Seeing that, my heart stopped for a moment. It was a card for a dental examination. The name Toshiki and the guy in the age, a perfect match. The dentist location was at Tokyo. There was no need to explain any further. How far away from Tokyo to Inusawa? It was far enough to think that bullet trains and cars would still take several hours. I would have wallowed the dental examination card. From Tokyo inside Shop in Hinoisawa. Could have gone to a tourist who came from Tokyo? Or maybe if they were driving the case onto Tokyo, just happened to pay a visit to the dentist. You know, I had fallen in somebody's back by accident. In my mind, I desperately struggled to find a possible excuse as to why this wallet didn't belong to Toshiki Inigai. 
It was as if I just wouldn't have do for this world to belong to him. However, we didn't know any possibility for error one by one. The haze around the wall in front of me completed gradually letting it come into clear focus. See? I felt a shiver of electricity right on my spine. My pulse quickly and I think felt my sweat begin to cook my entire body. But Moise's point of view is probably slack jawed and spaced out with a slow but new look on my face. Did you get that information from the dental office? That's your job, Alka-Saka Khan, son. Sam, son, son. I didn't go that far. When did this wallet show up? The person who picked it up was a villager. They did so yesterday, it seems. You know what I mean? When did this wallet dropped? I remained here last week, exactly seven days ago. It doesn't look like the contents of water damaged for the longest. It could be probably six days. Does anybody else in this station have knowledge of the existence of this wallet? The officer who first encountered it at the Inglis Harbor Police Box and also, the two or three people in charge of lost and found. Other than that, just me and you. If it's involved in a classified case, it's be back to talk about it, wouldn't it? I don't take no whack on my tongue. May I borrow a phone? Go ahead. Dial zero to get it outside light. I dialed the phone card and described an examination card. I could hear my pulse pounding inside my head. I feel that it must be recent so absurd. The edges of the receipts and cards inside the wallet were all from around the area where the grid said lived. The name of the examination card was also a match. The time was deducted the wallet had been left behind also matched up with the time of the line of the kidnapping. Of course, it was possible I could have just laughed it off as a big pile of coincidences. There was in strong evidence, rather than all the circumstantial proof, the contents of the phone calls about phone calls about the bank would have much of great, greater meaning. Hello, sorry to keep you waiting. This is XX at the office. Hello, this is XX Police. I have a misplaced wallet here. I'm trying to get in contact with the owner. Would you be able to help me? Inside the wallet, there was an examination card from your office. Yes, your name is Toshiki and you guy. If I give you the number of the card, would you be able to look up the phone number? Yes, thank you, if you could. So holding the receiver, I pulled out a notebook with my breast pocket with my furry hand. I went up to the page with the gristles I just a photo but recorded on it. Yes, hello, yes, go ahead. I compared the phone number written in the notebook to the one I was being read on the other end of the line. Then I processed the spoon and I looked behind me uneasily. I looked locked eyes with Oishi. Oishi looked puzzled what the matter was. Why would I feel uneasy and look behind me? That was because the person on the end of the line was reading not the numbers instead of doing straight from my notebook. It seemed that HQ was in a quiet in her board thanks to my report. No matter how many times I thought since authenticity of the invest I had linked to the grants that was called into question, I don't want to respond that it was the truth. When the lead investigator first picked up the phone, I was grilled up with the evidence I found that was almost too good to be true, if I do see so myself. But after having doubt to that doubt dispelled, he phoned to silence as the receiver was finally handed over to the section chief. He and he picked it up, the back on thumb on the other end of the line disappeared, and I knew they were comple completely silent. After asking the same questions about the wallet that the leader, that the leader, sh that the lead investigator did, the chief quietly spoke his next words. Got it. We'll dispatch several people as reinforcements. They should be able to make it there by evening. I guess I could come. Please continue with the investigation of the area. I get some information on the spot where the wallet was found. Kind of sound will be slept some people and head directly there. The fact that he was sitting kind of the lead investigator. He admitted that the chief had decided there was a possibility that the only good future defense aligns was somehow implicated in the kidnapping. However, it was felt as though so, until the leader investigator whom he trusted had verified the evidence with his own eyes, he was still going to be skeptical about it. Skeptical about how to go. This is the HQ sending me enforcements. I was ordered to investigate the area where it was a while it dropped around Takasudo. Apparently, this is looking at me. All the way over here, this is a new saw where they need a further upstream my way up around. Way up around there is Takasudo. What well, she explained when the wallet was found by pointing to the locations on the map of the wall. This place called Takasudo was even more involved than even was how it was. There is hardly my living area around Takasudo. It was started a long time ago. It's littered with abandoned houses, so it's really quite desolate around there. Oh, she saw him. Could I ask you to guide me to Takasudo? Yeah, I don't mind. You can't really get in and out of the even somewhere else. You please by yourself, after all. Of course, I'll have to make you wear the cap and mask again. I wish I could read to the company. The company me was very reassuring. It was sad to the son's info was to believe was to believe my like rabbit and blown. I wasn't sure if the villagers had realized that the fresh and heat this passion of the public safety was the tourist that had visited the village yesterday. 
in other words, me. But it's saying that that and notice would have been very overly optimistic. Given the uh, cursory thought, Takasuda, where the wallet was found, can be ruled out as a hiding spot for the kidnappers. The Takasuda area didn't have any residential, residential buildings, nor was it alongside a highway. There was a reason for the, even the locals to go out. It wasn't a reason for even the locals to go out of their way to visit it. It was a, exactly what you call a long forgotten ghost town on the end of the road. We couldn't ask for a better place to hold a kidnapped grandson. Also, you couldn't get to Takasuda without passing through Himazawa first. There are several conditions with the area, all more important. I'm not going to brush it off any longer. There was no longer any doubt that the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance or somebody hired by them were involved in the kidnapping. If that was the case, then the fact that this wallet was found might have already been leaked to them. They have even knew so much as how the public safety division was operating in the case of the wallet. Couldn't be something they didn't know. In that case, there's a possibility that the enemy was lying in wait. The diving alone into enemy territory, surrounded by enemy territory, and to say the least, required an amount of courage and any recklessness that I just did not have. Without your company, Moshi Sana, I wouldn't be able to step into the village so easily. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Honestly, I thought you would just ask for more money. <laughs> well, if we're being honest, I knew Asawa is exactly the place I like to go to. I would like to be, at least be appreciated if you paid for a cab fare. Still, a sudden request I could refuse for a friend that's played at the same table as me. Nick Fufu Fufu. Who is she great as he punted me at the back? I shook, shook him that he didn't just want to jump ship rather than have any sort of sense of duty towards his job. You know, so that it really matter. We now really appreciated the gesture. Well, then, Joey, hurry up and get going. If the enemy knew that the police had obtained the wallet, and they would probably have moved the hostage to a different place. There was a moment to lose, but always you without regard to the fact that we were about to head out. The guy never moved his jacket. What are you doing? Well, just a precaution. If you want me to poke the beehive to get your honey, I really... I have to be rather well prepared, you see. Do you want to put on one, too? What else you pull from the drawer below the desk is a stab proof vest. Ooh. The thing was, Toshiki and your guy, the grandson of the Minister of Construction and your guy, there was only one reason for our being here. If you did include Jib or art class, his grades were above average. Now was the result of having private tutoring such as twice a week. If you admitted the fact that you still couldn't do pull-ups, there was much else that wouldn't make to make school. Of course, he understood full well that his grandfather was a cabinet minister, but he also knew that not too many people were that interested in her relationship. He didn't want to go out of his way to bring up his grandfather to call him the minister of construction, and following him, he should have known a little more about what kind of work the minister of construction did than your average, average Joe. What the intel was that you, you, you tried your best on the black better for the master sometimes you made a few enemies. He knew that all too well from the time he spent as class representative. His grandfather had many enemies, he knew that he might personally catch some of that fallout, so he had to be twice as cautious. He was taught by that and by his parents, and that's why that moment he was kidnapped, he instantly knew that this was one of those occasions. He understood that he wasn't being treated as Toshiki and guy with the person, but rather as Toshiki and guy the grandson of the Minister of Construction, that he was a person who had a fault, but that was, was, was a result of some unavoidable trouble with his grandfather's work. It made little difference, but when he realized it wasn't because of anything he did, he was able to relax it for me a little. Of course, at first he was struck with terror, befitting his age, wondering what he was going to happen to him. But after a while of being tied up and maybe to stay lying down, he began to ponder a great many things. First, he thought about the reason he was being abducted like this. He understood the answer to that easily. He was taken hostage to course his grandfather, the minister, and there was no doubt about that. He didn't know what exactly the minister of construction did, but it was easy to imagine that there was much to be gained from threatening him. He respected his grandfather more than most. He earnestly believed that his own grandfather was within the top 20 of the most important people in Japan. That's exactly why he wouldn't have forgiven anybody who tried to threaten his beloved grandfather. And more importantly, he wouldn't have forgiven anybody who would use him as a tool to threaten his grandfather. His grandfather was really busy and rarely had time to meet with relatives. That's why, with little, what little time he did manage to screw together, he just dropped by and announced, and announced an apology for not being able to meet during I mean, years of summer vacation. He threw it on his grandson very, very much. The number of times that Toshiki was looked upon with disregard just because his grandfather was a few was a politician and Mr. currently weren't few. But he never thought about he never thought even once that he was one of his grandfather quit being a politician. Because it was his beloved grandfather and he wanted him to continue his career as long as possible from the bottom of his heart. However, Toshiki was now being held hostage and his grandfather was being threatened. His grandfather called him that the apple of his eye was surely suffering. 
he might do anything to save his grandson. He might even put aside his ideolo ideology if it was required to save his grandson. He might cave into the culprit's demands if it meant saving his grandson. When Toshiki thought about that, an inex inexplicable anger welled up within him. In his current situation, he is unable to forgive the cowards who would make sure his beloved grandfather suffer by using the desperately means. That feeling swelled up inside of him, this place of the fear. What he thought of at first, so something that any boy would imagine. Get out of these bonds, beat up the bad guys, and hand them over to the police. Images of the brave heroes from all that manga he had really read passed through the back of his mind. In this imaginary scenario, he slipped his bonds easily, floating like a butterfly to evade his captors, and standing like a bee to bring them all down. In the end, it was nothing more than his silly little fantasy. But with this vision obstructed and not able to see anything, it was something that he could get into more than any anime. It was something that he could get into more than any any anime, anime at, the, at the moment. In actuality, he was enjoying these little scenarios, and he said for the long period of time he was tied up, his captors had really done anything to him that they would feel sorry for. However, eventually began to grow tired of his fantasies and more realistic scenarios began to run through his head. It was then he realized that now there were a solution. Yes, he wanted to do something for his grandfather who was being threatened. He was being held there. He's being held here to inflict pain on his grandfather with the thing that he could at least forgive. He was also the next most vexing, and then he noticed there was a much simpler way he could save his grandfather without having to beat up his despicable captors. That was to remove himself as a hostage from the hand of these villains. If he was to disappear from here, his captors would have nothing to threaten his grandfather with. The captors that restrained him, but they didn't threaten, treat him roughly, and they made sure he was fed well enough. I mean, at most, he was nothing more than a means for their threat. They weren't looking to bully or kill him out of spite. If he behaves, you know, it will befall him. Realizing that gave him a strong sense of courage and carrying his general thoughts as far as he let it run his course to the actual conclusion. Right now, this moment, Toshiki and the guy had decided to escape. His ears had been stuck to the sponge like material of this big shift earplugs. However, they didn't actually do much to block out any sound. He could overhear everything his captors were saying. Realizing that this was his advantage, even when his captors spoke to him, he acted like he couldn't hear them due to the earplugs. He kept a second that he could hear their conversation talk about all sorts of things without any reservations. Thanks to that, he was able to obtain various pieces of information. First of all, this was a Tokyo. He's saying that this was quite a distance away. And on top of that, his countryside nestled deep in the mountains. It also seemed that his captors were inconvenient living out here so he could deduce that this place was far removed from any sort of town. Finally, whenever they went out to buy food or other supplies, they would always take a car. And that fact caused us some dismay, because he knew that the left that he learned at school of very around blindly, while shouting for help would it work here. He paused his little mental escape scenario there, his ultimate goal was to find somebody who would help him. If somebody who fit the description wasn't close by, his chances of escaping successfully grew slim. I just left far off land and deep in the mountains, a place where you couldn't even go shopping without using a car. In this situation, escaping would be very difficult. He grew depressed, and after a little while, he returned to his original scenario, imagining becoming a hero like in the manga he read and beating down his captors became his respite. However, as he put those delusions on his head, his heart hating to surrender, continued to search for a way to escape, and then he thought of a way. If the goal was far away, all he had to do was get closer. His goal in a nutshell was to find somebody who would help him, in other words, somebody other than his captors. If he faked to be sick, the his captors would have to take him to the hospital or bring the doctor to him. They would probably be reluctant to do that, but he already knew that the hostage was more important than anything. In the after and said something happened, like him dying occurred, they wouldn't be able to threaten anybody more. Luckily, he had an experience that would help him think a serious illness. At the end of last year, he was inadvertently involved in a car accident and had to undergo surgery. The scar from that surgery was so clearly visible on his lower torso. He recalled the pain and suffering from that time. The existence of that experience would make a huge impact on the realism of his performance. He was quite confident in his ability to fake an illness. Ugh, oh my. His captors at first took that as a sign he needed to use the washroom. Untying only his arms, they dragged him to the room there while he was still blindfolded. But he didn't try to get up. His hands now free only clutched at his abdomen as he writhed in hackney. Hey, what's wrong? Does your stomach hurt? He still had his earplugs so he could have, so he had to pretend he didn't hear his captors asking the question. He said with a nod, so he hurriedly had to stop himself. What's the matter? Yeah, the kids clutched at his stomach. It must be a stomach mistake or something. He's got to slip down and suffer from it for a bit. Or then proposed a course of action while another laid out his doubts. I told you he might be faking it. The strong boy, your tummy hurt. His ears are plugged so he can't hear you. But that's the problem. Do we got any mess that works with stomach pains? 
I want to go to the pharmacy and buy something. I'm going to sick pain. There's a bunch of different medicines up there. I was like, oh, this God, we shouldn't buy him any old medicine. It's so stubborn when it's just constipated. If you're buying some medicine for that, you'll go rumble down. It won't kill him if we're wrong, neither. It doesn't size what like the onion on. It might be an appendicitis or something. My uncle son got it a while ago. It was pretty scary. When they kept this lean over, we said the boy who been over in agony. I feel sorry for the kid. who well, his whole body's covered in sweat. Is it your stomach? Does it hurt? Hey, hey, if it hurts, you should clutch at it so tightly. I'm gonna make it worse. But listen, that is kept his work concerned about his stomach. He inadvertently let his shirt right up. Laying the scarf of the surgery coming to plain view. His vision was still secured with packaging, packing tape, so he couldn't see the reaction to the scar. But his skeptics were taken aback and judging from the boy with Salas, he had a tape, the reaction he was looking for. Hey, this is bad. The scar is not that old. Does that boy have a fever? There's a thermo thermometer around here. No way we have one, but that's the last way. Yeah, you know, first four, I feel like pretty hot, I think. I've heard that under for a long shot, it's old wounds can be aggravated. Then what do we do? Are you saying that the medicine won't work? We don't know what surgery the score is from, but in any case, this is bad. In the worst case, it could be fatal. That's bad. This is really bad. And we should have a doctor to take a look at it. I just wait there's a chance that he might suddenly die on us. So should keep even guy with those words knew that the situation was progressively all progressing. Exactly as he envisioned, it's snickering to himself in his side, pressed his acting even further. He didn't even need to see what, no, his captain were panicked and ran around like chickens with their uh, cut off at this his with cut off at this troublesome turn of events. Should we take him to the clinic? No, that's not good. Probably better if the doctor came here. Like the alright evening, is that okay? Will that be alright? It'd be worse if anything that happened to the hostages. The other thing we could do is an emergency. One of the captains hurriedly left in the car. The other they made completely shaken about this point while just went from his forehead with a handkerchief. They looked like they were bringing a doctor, as long as the doctor wasn't accomplished, that doctor was just go. He was so what he showed us to go from. These captains were probably aware of that happening. They could be prepared for it. This is all where it comes down to luck. So all the sweat merging from his brows was from that nervousness. In that moment, the packet tape was covered in his ears and eyes were torn off. The burning light that he was seeing for the first time in several days hurt his eyes. After that, the gag that made it hard for him to breathe was also removed. Are you alright, kid? We're breathing without the three you right now. Just hold on for a bit. Uh, yeah. Doctor was coming, the doctor was coming, the other is gonna ask for help and how was he gonna get away from those captors? That's what Thor of thoughts begins flooding through his mind. I think you know this already, but they'll say they're necessary to the doctor. We don't want to hurt you or anything. You know that that right? Those you can got not a while finding pain and obedience. His expectations are everybody's expectations, whether they doubted that he was faking his illness or not, they knew that what his goal was and we tried to stop it. His stomach contracted with the stress of this gambit, making it seem like his stomach really was starting to hurt. No, it really was, but there was no reason to panic. If he, if he failed with his approach to the doctor, there was nothing to lose. And there was nothing to lose. It was this method of faking it was to get in touch with the doctor. They couldn't think of other methods from here on out. It wasn't much. But at the present, this was the easiest and most traumatic way you could think of. Ah, the more he thought about it, the more it looked like he was his worst last gambit. Eventually, he heard the sound of the car approaching once again. The sound of the car's door, her being hurriedly opened and shut, the sounds of several footsteps approaching. I think I'm in a white medical coat. Is he acknowledged the boy? Suspicious look showed itself on his face. Who's he? He's one of those kids in the village, is he? The captain's didn't respond. From the looks of it, the young duck didn't realize that this was an abnormal situation. One of the captains took to talk threateningly. That's got nothing to do with the duck. For a while, the doctor and the captain son stood at one another. However, a number of the stands the side of the boy continued to suffer. The doctor and the captain had hoped they impressed any further. I'm concerned about this old surgical scar. What kind of operation was it? We don't know. Hmm. I should really bring the doctor to the clinic. Doc, we really can't do that. The doctor said he wanted to bring the boy back to the clinic, but the captain simply slightly shook their heads at the notion. It was a fleeting help, but it was only natural that the captors would refuse. At that moment, his eyes met with the doctors. Seeing that the boy's pitiful state was abnormal, the doctor suspected it was a serious illness. Are you alright? I'm a doctor. When was the surgical scar from uh, last year? During the winter. I'm in an accident. In an accident, I see. This is a problem. He could have the doctor figure out that he was faking it here. He had to somehow figure out a way to keep this all going until the doctor is being confined and needed help. I'm going to touch the affected area, okay? If it hurts, I'm aware. Ah! Mm -hmm. 
So you don't have to pay for the doctor because it's only we get the ponder. Here's some, uh, how some how get himself to a hospital. The Toshi Gaini guy figures on this was the performance of a lifetime. Whew. Okay, guys, I'm going to take a few bit break here, and I'll see you guys in about five minutes or so. Okay, guys, I'm back. Whoops, a daisy. Uh, good work, everyone. I know it's hot, but please do your best. If you catch anybody illegally dumping, please contact someone immediately. We'll act quickly. Thank you for your compulsion, Oishi Sun. Please, a gap wide enough for a single car was opened up in the barricade. Oishi Sun, oh, Oishi showed his gratitude for perhaps a certain attitude with a short deep. Beep on the horn rolled the car forward to the checkpoint. This time, my appearance was a very uh, embodiment of the world. Were suspicious. A baseball cap, mask, and sunglasses. On top of that, even though it's world, or you know, it's wearing hoodie, a new respectable police officer would be loath to not stop me for questioning. I meant to be over cautiously full while well, that my face was slow, but it might have be already been too late for that having use. Who says excuse? I doffed that unbearably hot hoodie and went record with the mask and had to them seat behind me. Oh my, is that okay with a sheep little disguise like this? They probably figured it out anyways. <laughs> that just might be the case. Which you probably think that I'm mean, expecting to be here was fun and continue to laugh. The beautiful and pristine scenery of the Nimizawa spread out before me. The village itself would have been quite beautiful if it weren't for the complicated circumstances surrounding it at that moment. It would absolutely love to take Yuki here for a drive one day. Come to think of it, I didn't get a chance to call her last night. I played around with the idea in my head, but in reality, it is a village. It was an all sun and rainbows. I had everything in the prefectural headquarters. The heart of this village, the intelligence network that the three families wielded was due to blood ties and regional relationships, unbelievably well organized. Their net was spread not just around Hinamazawa itself, but encapsulated the entirety of the city of Shishibon as well. When I first heard that someone in this recesses of my mind, I didn't take it completely seriously. How could a local organization out in the boonies here have some so grandoise? Grandioise? 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 I don't know. Oh, good. Did I see the back of my mind? I ridiculed the thought. But not only would they really threaten the minister, but they demonstrated that they had a complete grasp on our movements, which were supposed to be top secret. They were almost like secret police that control a small Eastern European like a country like in some spy novel. The villagers here would and better not get in their hands dirty from fighting the damn project. I also heard something like that at the prefectural headquarters. Oh, now that you mentioned it, when I, when I first arrived here, she also said that this place was a war zone, Danny. The residents of this village were at the same time freedom fighters. Although, they, by definition, they were no different than guerrillas or militia. They weren't protected by the, gut, the Geneva Convention, but they also didn't adhere to those rules either. This place was more of a quagmire. <laughs> in any legitimate battlefield, a secret war was unfolding. I could drive along because Wishi was with me all along, with, because Wishi was with me. But if I was to leave this car for even something as tri trivial as looking for a vending machine, there was a chance I wouldn't return. Even though a single shot hadn't been fired, this was a battlefield. No the reason why. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. No the reason why the bullets weren't flying was simply because it was hard for a civilian to obtain a gun in Japan. So they were probably just equipped with weapons of the lake guns that were easy to obtain. That was what Oishi was wearing as that proof vest was, did it? Uh, Kasaka sounded like nervous. <laughs> the fact that it was so presensive was, of course, picked up on um, by Oishi. If you already figured it out, there's no point in trying to deny or hide it. Of course I am. We're headed to the heart of the enemy territory alone, aren't we? I'm worried about if something unlikely happens with just the two of us. Something unlikely, nah, it'll be alright. Is it everybody in this village or enemy? If everybody gets their story straight, they could murder someone in broad daylight and there wouldn't be a shred of evidence. I'm asking about something like that. This is what the ironclad reel in that barging into the Yakuza office alone was about. If there was an initial party involved, the area was about by the laws of common sense. If something happened, you wouldn't be able to prove it. There wasn't anybody who would take your side. It was pretty much the definition of Pokey the Bear. I left the word that we're headed towards the Himasawa area. In the worst case, we've also got a radio. I know you're scared, Akasaka, so I'm it's not that easy to pull out the perfect crime. Well, of course it is. I mean, we can't let our guard down either. Akasaka, so I'm too worked up over this. You were more relaxed last time we came up here together, weren't you? Ha 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 ha. off, I wish he dumped his chest and grit as if I could say I could depend on him. Well, that's good. It's really iffy. Ha <laughs> ha This goes with the having the badge. 
from which even a motion by sticking his, out his index finger. It was undoubtedly, undoubtedly the image of a gun. Will it be any of use? We're not afraid of dealing with the aftermath of two shooters, that's actually very reassuring. An officer's gun was only for show. If you really wanted to fire it, you required a number of solutions, and you had to be prepared for the long probationary period afterwards. That definitely wasn't worth it, so even an officer did unholster his gun, there was it. Or one who actually wanted to pull the trigger. I guess I could sign me carrying one. A piece. Well, yeah. You ever fired it? I have. For training, though. Well, I guess that'd be true. <laughs> well, then, have you wish you saw me? Nah, ha, ha, nah, I'll just throw away. But, what was this? I thought he was left at me because he had experience. The two of us left together. I've also never pointed the barrel at anybody. I've looked down at the barrel of a gun a few times, so just being made to look down the barrel like this, I know it's a shortened lifespan by about three years. Even if you had never fired a gun before, you couldn't even begin to compare that amount of inexperience experience you had over me. At a time like this, I could only marvel again at the how reliable we should seem. Come to think of it, I didn't want to be gone this way in the middle of the day, but there's no way a car to get through other than here. I guess I could sign the suitcase, put the mask. Again, die face, please. What's the matter? Can you not hear it because the air conditioning is too loud? I'll turn it off. Try opening the window. When I opened the air, a blast of hot air blew inside, and then I could hear it angry yelling coming from far away. At that moment, the force gave away on either side of us. Our view expanded suddenly. And there could be seen him as all the construction grounds, the very front line for the Himazawa village, who absolutely opposed to the construction of the Himazawa dam. The crackly bears of someone's voice surrounded over an enormous loudspeaker. The roar of the angry voices continued to rumble. The incredible loud volume had become a veritable sound can, spewing out ammunition. ammunition. The prefabricated site office was surrounded by two sets of high fences, laced with barbed wire. Lined up in front of those fences were riot police and their vehicles, and surrounding them were all the villagers. They held out their protests against the dam as a single entity. Oh, there's not too many of them today, we're in luck. That's not too many, yeah, the other one there's a lot of them, and the crowd reaches as far as the road. You wouldn't even be able to reach, you wouldn't be able to inch forward in the car. At first, it was an overwhelming intensity, it looked to me like there was more people than there were actually was. But upon closer inspection, there was almost 50 to 70 of them. But the 607 propaganda truck signed up that it looked like they belonged to Ben of Thugs were a strange enough sight. The villagers were also wearing helmets and bandanas and as well covering their faces with masks, adding to the oddity of all of it. And the propaganda trucks of the brain ran their course, had their volume burn, turned up even higher, began to flood the area with silk dress. To say that noise was down and violent would be an understatement. From this distance, it was still this loud, the glass in the office was probably rattling from the noise. They can't do anything there but take it. Those right squad guys, if one of them is wearing the earplugs, they're still having their hearing damage. Poor sobs, can't do something about it with noise ordinance laws. Hmm, our prefecture doesn't have any laws regarding noise ordinance. Also, those are so trust, right? We can't regulate religious activities. Those guys are pretty smart. <laughs> it was what I think she said. Actually, no matter how tightly the window was shut, the booming sound of the such as still filled the car. I couldn't even hear what was she was sitting right next to me was saying. As the car approached along the propaganda trucks, the blur became quite difficult to bear. It was enough to just plug my ears with my fingers. I had to hold my head to keep my skull from splitting apart. If I had seen this terrifying energy sooner, I would have probably understood what the of a village was much quicker. No, I knew they wouldn't blink in the eyes, sacrificing themselves in order to protect their own town. Oh, so that ain't noisy. Shut up, shut up, shut up. My head throbbed. It felt like it was going to split apart. My eardrums crackled up. Crackled on top of it all. I felt like I was going to throw up. With this road crowded with a throng of squatters, the propaganda trucks of the riots police vehicles was like no way easy to get by. Even if we tried to shoot the scatters with the car or horn, they were also swearing earplugs and oblivious, oblivious to the noises from the outside world. And when it easily moved, the car would only inch forward at snail's pace. Even then, the car eventually got through, starting to leave the two needless boys behind. And the ball guy that was playing much on with us last night, remember him? I remember exactly this older person who didn't exactly miss words. That guy called, or you should call the old man, or someone like that. You see, it's the foreman of that main construction site. He's probably holed up in the front building trying to work while irritated out of his mind. Poor fella, you wouldn't be able to stand in office like that every day. Yeah, there's no end to the number of people who can't handle it and quit. But every time that happens, our wages go up, so I won't say it's in vain. 
even having to deal with all that noise and host noise hostility, they still made a way show she found it unenviable. Damn it, these guys, can they hear or can't they? The group of squatters were in the way of the car. Or was she sufficiently annoyed late into the horn, but there was no indication that they were moving anytime soon? In this thing, could they not even hear a car horn? Or did they hear it and were being malicious? If there were any riot police nearby, they would have it made people move, but it was just so happy there weren't any around here. Ah, oh, jeez, what is just a man at? Oh, she opened up the door. The hot air and even more heated roar, the crowd spilled into the car. Oh, she said something that he grinned wildly, but I couldn't hear what it was. He was getting them to move. Something like that. Oh, she stepped out of the car and closed the door. The thing faded slightly. I started blankly as always. She headed towards the group and started some sort of conversation. Typically, if I find the minister's going to attack a pseudo, at the very least, I wanted to find them there. Find him and slip the cursed bond to this incomprehensible village. I could only pray. At that moment, my shadow was suddenly cast over me. Somebody was standing right outside the passenger side window blocking the sunlight. I spun around, looked up, and realized who the black lit figure was. Huh? It was a girl. It was Rika Frude. The girl stared down at me with a bored look in her eyes. I didn't have any justification for it, but I felt like I had been found by somebody. It shouldn't be found by. To fill the silence, I raised my hand as I mouthed a meek greeting. Of course, there's always she heard my small voice in this clamor. But even she would have seen me wave in my hand a greeting. In spite of that, she simply stared down at me with a cold look on her face. At that moment, I noticed that he spread throughout the car once again. Or she had returned to the driver's seat. Took a look at the group that was blocking the road. They had started to move aside while glaring our way. Sorry to keep you waiting. Shall we go? And oh, she registered that figure of the group behind me. When the villagers came over and picked her up, in a minute it was dangerous, so get away. It was I want you to whisper one or two words over, I couldn't hear any of it. Well then, let's go. I'm going to go it, okay? But of course, it's still within the speed limit. As I shake it off the stool, audible angry voices, and we she floored the gas, along with the roar and the ding and the shouting, the villagers and girl quickly disappeared behind us. As soon as we were through here, they were in Takasudo. Are you okay if we end up getting into a firefight? And I'll be fumbling for the safety at the last moment, you hear? <laughs> oh, she laughed mockingly again. I was more concerned with that girl had said, however, I was vaguely bothered by it. What was she trying to say? That apathetic and candid expression. Suppose it's normal if you're nervous from here on out, but if you don't deal with it, there's a chance you might do something rash. But there was no longer way to confirm what the girl had tried to tell me. There might have been that girl who warned me to go back to Tokyo again or else. Was saying to me he was who he was here and now ignoring that warning. Even though I warned you. What a fool. I had a feeling she said something like that. Yeah. Gross. Um is this the end of the chapter? Uh, no? Huh. Wow. Maybe it'll be a long video, who knows? If you were to call this, call Himazawa rather a lonely village of Takatsudo was outright desolate. For your everyday city boy like me, I couldn't understand why anybody would force themselves to live here. There were signs that people had, but they were all covered in dust or enveloped in ivy, indicating that it was all abandoned. People really lived in a place like this, didn't they? Well, it was a long time ago, a remote place like this was pretty rough for no folk to live, and the younger people probably wanted to try living in a more suitable place. But there's nobody left to take their reins or that like, gets left to this. You know, if I had no personal attachment to the village, seeing the disused wieldings made me feel a little sentimental. I mean, it seemed that wish you also felt the same way. Where's the wallet found over here? The person who found it must have a good reason to come out to the desolate place. Yeah, there are some villagers who have fulfilled on the mountains here. They pass by here in the morning and the evenings. The villagers who work in the fields walk by here every day? No way. They probably go as far as they can by car. So in the early mornings and evenings, they pass by here and just happen to find a single wallet? They probably did. <laughs> or exactly they say they found it, and I think it just a bit further ahead. The person who found the wallet just happened to have some stomach cramps. It was probably to use a thicket to do its business, it seems. It was there he happened to find it, probably hoping there was some toilet paper in there. And <laughs> Everything about that story just seemed a little too convenient. Right from the discovery of the wallet, I just could shake the feeling that something's off. I expressed the feeling that I start had a half at the start of the day, quite frankly. It seemed too good to be true, but it was unwavering proof. It was too perfect, sickly, so that was a nice feeling. He might actually be onto something by saying it's all a little too perfect. Meaning, the truth is, I heard of something from a friend of mine in the fourth division, and where Oreo's are exactly referenced to kidnapping of the minister's grandson. She referenced it.
Yeah, it's been several days since that Mrs. Grant has been cleaning up the poor boy. It'd be nice if they let him go soon to see that old Oreo murders for like well on her veranda. And that little music was conveyed to the various people who work in the deep behind the scenes of the son of Sethi family. Right, I had heard something earlier from Santos on that forum that when the leader Oreo had concerned, somebody in the family would be considerate. So Nancy, says she gave the order to release the hostage to see if that way the wallet being conveniently discovered, would just appoint to hand the boy over to the police. Why would they release the hostage? Yeah, well, there's only a reason why somebody would release the hostages up there. What they is it? They reached a deal. That would mean they must have promised to halt the human Sawa Dam project. The damn project will definitely go away at that moment. Those words, the girl has served to resurface in the back of her mind. In the end, it was turning out exactly as she proclaimed. That young girl knew the circumstances. She knew everything about this kidnapping incident from the beginning to the end. Akasaka, the girl unexpectedly called my name. What is it? Go back to Tokyo. Huh? Before long, you will woefully regret coming to the village. That would be an incredible, pathetic thing to see. So I thought I warned you right now. Why would I come to regret it? Stop whining. When you try to cross the road, when the don't walk sign was up. Did your parents finish explaining why it was said just before pulling you back to the sidewalk? They pulled you back right away, wouldn't they? They pulled you back before explaining why it was dangerous, wouldn't they? In other words, this was something like that. The girl who knew I was hanging from start to finish had warned me in the beginning to go back to Tokyo. Akasaka is such a coward. Tee hee 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 hee. You probably find a boy that happens afterwards will probably be a bit of a problem. How it'll be a problem now is something they still have to like make them figure out. Do you know a girl named Rika Frude, who I, I had said was a, such a non sequitur that always she sat in stunned for silence for a while. Of course I know her. She's the only daughter of the Frude family, one of the three families. What kind of girl is she? Well, well, this was an unexpected name to hear. I'm a bit surprised. Does public seem to think that the Frude family is most fishy and wants to keep an eye on them? Share some of the information with me, please. I know it's not like that. It's just something that caught my attention. Hmm? Nah, well, whatever. I want to do not do to not answer a question for my friend. I've sat at the same table with. I'm honored that you would call me a friend. Nick, who's that little lady as well? Somewhat of a village best guy. She's beloved by everybody in the village. Some of the older folk worship her, especially worship. Hmm, I don't know much about it. You see, girls born in a three-day family have somewhat of a sacred implication. It seems it's one of the local beliefs in Hinomasa where the living incarnation of the Oyashiro Sama or something like it, or so the story goes. Apparently. Oh, yeah, Shiro Sama, now that you mention it, I think I saw Oya Shiro Sama right on some of the Atlantis banners. What is Oya Shiro Sama exactly? Ah, oh, it's named the guardian deity of Inuazawa. They believe it'll exact punishment on those who would do ill, do ill towards the village. Well, if there was such a convenient god around the guys, the dam, the dam would have been long since the being done in the divine justice. Luckily, nothing like that has happened to anybody just yet. The grand side of the minister who traveled with the village as a result of Uyo Shiro's almost danger was in what they call it again. Alright, Anna Kakushi, the minister's grand side was demoned away. That would probably be how the script is being written. Haha, <laughs> I see it's probably would turn to something like that. Divine punishment brought by Uyo Shiro Sama. In the culprit is the living incarnation of the Uyo Shiro Sama, that girl. Nah, ha, ha, I mean, I didn't know exactly what I was saying. The fact that boy, she left it off with a bitter relief. Oyo Shiro's joyous laughter was so infectious that I began to laugh like an idiot as well. Oh, this is unusual. Oh, she left the lightning in the horn several times, rolled the window down, leaned out, waving his arm in an exaggerated manner. It was a car headed the opposite way. Until now, we hadn't run into any other cars except our own. And if all the places is up to this little eye location, it's not reaching you, the owner of the car. Uh, the car was also tripped and his arm came to stop. Dr. Irie, good afternoon. The other cars went and rolled down slowly, revealing a young man in a white overcoat. It's about my age, you're perhaps a bit older, but you really can't judge somebody by their appearance. Why is it for the horse time? Good afternoon. Hi, huh, if I see me and you here. That's my line, doctor. I never thought I'd see you here, Nick. What happened? Oh, nothing. Just a little house call. Oh, really? It was an emergency? No, nothing quite that serious, thankfully. Nick, I'll take my leave here. If I don't mind getting quick, back quickly, my staff will be angry with me. Uh, being the head of the clinic must be tough. Well, then, take care. The young doctor named Ari after again gesturing his farewell drove it forward as soon as we were on the corner. Uh oh guys, guys, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> 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 Ooh, sorry about that guys. Oh she also drove four but soon came to a stop again. He pulled out a worn map book of the dash, his expression didn't have an ounce of irreverence. 
He was perfectly serious. What is it? And the clinic should be making any house calls today. It must have been quite an emergency, or otherwise the patriarch saw my exenting circumstances. Or she flipped through the pages, opening up to look at back of the Takasuda. After that, he took her a look around and started to figure out what our current location was. I was saying, how much is he suspicious? And I say that it's hardly anybody that lives in the Takasuda area. The road we're on right now is Sierra, Dr. Eric, in this direction. I mean, no sense of our surroundings. I couldn't digest just say about the place he was indicated on the map. We're heading towards the spot where the wallet was from. By the way, that's over here. But see, if you're heading to one of the few visits in the Takasuda, it's the wrong road. I mean, Dr. Eric, if it was there, she would, there are no residents. I saw somebody work at a field between these monsters and collapsed, but if somebody collapses, you call a doctor and normally you bring them back with you for a more detailed examination. But just now, Ari son said, Ari said that nothing was so serious. It didn't seem like anybody else was in the car with them. I wish he did say any more than that. I have also said nothing more. The doctor just saw examined the patient close by. Only that. The noisy radio suddenly gone quiet. The sky had just suddenly turned in a depressive color. As I wish you knew that it was the mice of Tarana, Torrential's downpour started as though it turned to disappoint him. Eventually, we should stop the car. The lens also broke the song as with the percussion of the rain on the roof and the soft squeak of the windshield wipers. The suit is a bit hush hush, shall we? Said in a quiet voice, he exited the car with an umbrella carefully as it not make any noise. Wish you never indicated the other side of the thicket. He was pointing at a prefabricated shutting car that was parked beside it. The car looked obviously well to take care for. It was a vehicle that had been left there for several years. What's that shed? It contains equipment used by the Forestry Service. I heard that they don't go near it except during the summertime. Does that car belong to somebody from the Forestry Service then? Don't know. It doesn't look like an official vehicle, though. Why well, she was playing it cool, but in my nervousness was gradually re increasing. Just in case. So now as she returns to the car. I thought he was going to get an umbrella, but he grabbed on the onboard radio instead. Hello, this is Oishi D. Ray. Greetings, greetings, Sifu. Yes, this is Oishi. Can you name me a PSP? Oishi is having reached loud and clear over. I'm currently found the forestry service equipment shed, not the one in the Yuchi, the Yokuchi, the one in the Takasuda, if you had there from Himazawa. Affirmative, copy that. There's some suspicious people in the shed proceeding to investigate. If you don't hear back from me in five minutes, get in touch with the local police substation. Have them send a cruiser as soon as possible. If you would, please. Understood. Well then, shall we go take a look? <laughs> Silence, he was crucified here. He had heard the sound of the car multiple times. So he just left the far out sound was more of the same. However, the reaction from his captors was its own now. Except that he had seen before. They just they jumped reacted as if shocked by a jolt of electricity. Pressed against a window cautiously peering outside. They stopped. Somebody from the forestry service? This is bad. No, it looks like a cop to me. One of the captains looks at the boy by his collar and puts the blade against his cheek. I can keep quiet for a bit. I think you know this, but if you try to shout, that there'll be problems. Thus, you gave your guy was sure the doctor had reported things to the police. He had felt really bad. He thought that he was saved, but not imagining that his captives would resort to violence when they were cornered. His anxiety remained unabated. What do we do? Got a buy time. Take the kid in and slid out the back. Well, meet back here with the heat saw. One of the perpetrators got for the boy by the collar and forced him to stand. Of course, Toshiki and the guy tried to resist by feigning that his illness had aggravated by the disrupt treatment, but his cup was paying no heed. Bang, 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 the door was finally banged upon. Excuse me, hello, bang, bang, bang. The door was banged on again. Toshiki and the guy hesitated for a moment to respond that voice by yelling. However, while he was being indecisive, his mouth was covered, took an option away from him. He later the captain's waved the, the other to go. The left perpetrator and I respond, hello, boy, keeping the voice mouth covered, started turning towards the back door. Yellow, they need something. How do you do this? Please, would you mind opening the door? <laughs> His sudden rain has used a bit of trouble, and uh, I'll just open. The moment the lock was undone, she forced the door open. And with a gleam of menace his eyes, he pushed them inside and stepped into the room. In a small and empty room, he was able to quickly discern that the boy he was looking for was nowhere to be seen. Mm, I heard this was the equipment shed for the forcey service, but there's nothing here at all. There was something inside the room that would indicate this was an equipment shed. There was only a mountain of blankets, indicating that somebody was sleeping here alongside an empty food package strung about. Ah, it's been empty for some time now. Never seen no equipment stored around here. But there was a forestry service building here. Isn't there? Are you from the forestry service? Oh, about yet, yeah, police. The two of them glittered each other suspiciously. Well, I thought we should remain steadily, steadfastly refused to reveal the identity before the other day. They mentioned you from the sharp looking in Wishy's eyes. She realized that it, would be hard to leave. it was hard to talk as way of this one. No matter what you said, that most of them could buy, probably be only a few dozen suckets. Only a sudden rainfall this tense moment. You said they heard a sudden struggle from far off. Oh, she had a hunch. There was no doubt the Akasaka who was circling around back had run into the perpetrators who were trying to slip away.
As Uchi thought that that man found him, Ryuki a moment faster. The man swung with an attack, but it was more intended to obscure Oishi's vision rather than actually hit him in the face. Seizing his opportunity, the man kicked out at Oishi's groin without any hesitation, but he missed his mark and tumbled and landed a critical blow. That man trying to pin Oishi grabbed him by the base of his neck with both hands and fiercely tried to push him down. But as Oishi's fell backwards, he's kicking him in upward. He dug his foot into the man's midsection. Without leg acting as a fulcrum, the man was flung by the falling Oishi as if by a circle throw. The two of them scored off in the pouring rain. Isn't this interesting? You want to go? <laughs> Oishi is trying to cheer himself on very smugly. He didn't set up while brushing them the mud off himself. And then he got into the assault. Oishi was getting up rather awkwardly compared to that man who threw swiftly spreading to his feet. Oishi saw in hurry. Agasaka's voice rang off in the distance, straight from the distress of his voice. He was already engaged in a fight when the Oishi didn't reconvene with him. Oishi's hands were full as well. Akasaka saw sorry, we can wait a bit. A man raised both, both fists of the stairs and hinted at him acquainted, acquainted with the karate or some other form of martial art. Of course, Oishi was an officer of the law, was decently worse than Jito. He also had the moxie to have into his fair share of fights before, despite no one. Because of that, he could tell that the man in front of him was quite a bit better at fighting than he was. All they were thinking that this was going to be easy just because the order came from the sons like he to release the hostage had been this big mistake. Big mistake. You're pretty good. It's been a while since I got this worked out. <laughs> Oishi played off the situation like this. So sweat. His opponent said his attitude took that, that mean. Now Oishi wasn't going down too easily. The man while he charged forward attempting to grab Oishi. The man managed a successful clinch from his low stance. Oishi would be tackled to the ground and and not being mount mounted. It was something you saw often when children fought, but it, it really wasn't a bad position since you could do much what you were in it. Once you responded to that move, also lowered his stance to collide with the man on the heat. The moment they clashed, which you grabbed the man's label. As he yanked the label upwards, he smashed it to the man's solar plex plexus with the elbow of the same arm. It was a move from the she's person personal brand of brawling judo. He then grabbed on his free hand and attempted to throw his opponent with both hands. But the man lowered his center of gravity and swung his arms in a large arc at one them with Oishi's. Not only that, but he had forth, forced both of Oishi's elbows to outside position, and Oishi, now in an upward position, was in danger of exposing his back with his head so close to the man's chest. This guy practiced a Aikido or grappling, didn't he? Oishi could not affect his fingers were twisted in the man's shirt and couldn't get away, release his grip. But he's still in an awkward position of being a bit over and to top it off at zero range. The man was able to read Oishi's movements completely as he tried to square his way into a better position. And then take the palm of his hands. It swiftly clapped them over both of Oishi's ears, or her, clapping the ears of the idiot that watched Lark, except for self defense was basically forbidding. Karate and Chudo didn't recognize it as a legal technique. It was a bunch of a simple and dangerous attack. Oishi raised both his hands and they tried to reflexively clutch at his own ears. But before that could happen, the man wrapped his arms around Oishi's neck. His thick biceps pushed firmly around the base of which he stepped his little vice. Oh, which he instinctively thought he was going to be killed. After all, it was hard to believe that a man like this, who was accustomed to fighting, could crush his opponent's neck to this position. Most important, they knew that he chose to keep his hold on force to to lose consciousness. That's why he was shit this moment, even though his face was switching was gritting wildly. He, even though he had a chance to kill him, he didn't choose to. He was staking. Oh, this guy's always just killing me. However, though that might be the case, it means a hold of this deck was so by means gentle and no time at all, Oishi's consciousness began to fade. Having the experience of being taken down countless times to Gino during the student days, Oishi was utterly resigned to the fact that it was over. Akasaka was finally recovered from the intense spread of being kicked in a rather sensitive area. He had bumped into the captor and carried the boy by the back entrance. He had seen Tokushi and the guys picking plenty of times. But was able to immediately ascertain that the boy if anything was a real deal. But with his mouth covered and package tape, it also with his limited experience, it was hard for him to panic over how to deal with the situation. Of course, the perpetrator didn't overlook this momentary lapse. He kicked lightning squarely in the critical spot with Akasa could not even have time to call for help. As the man blew, as the man flew the boy over his shoulder, he headed towards the foot of the shed. But Pak you know, she's bellowing voice, he gave up going in that direction. And then dashed off towards the forest. As if the weight of the boy slung over his shoulder wasn't even there, Agasaka was lost for a moment. And me up with Oishi, who was fighting over the enemy, was fighting for a safer option. He could have just lose sight of the fleeing man. Agasaka stood up and chased up the captain's back. 
He ran through the short, thick of branches of fallen leaves, crunched over your foot, the tips of branches ripped and clawed at him, small scratches that scrapped themselves on his body one after another. He kicked on stubbing the puddles of blood, and his shoes were filled soon with murky water. Karakasaka, traveling through this unexplored forest, was even though it was an emergency situation, extremely unpleasant. <laughs> Stop, this is a police. As he said that he regretted it immediately as it was but was the breath. It wasn't a thing in the world that would politely stop were told by the police. <laughs> the city by like Akasaka ran into this force was an arduous task. However, it must have been no easy task for either for that man carrying the minister's, minister's grandson. Neither he gained nor lost ground in the pursuit. Akasaka realized that gained back a bit of composure. He just kept on chasing him. He was riding in the same conditions. In fact, that man with an awkward stride it was at far more of a disadvantage. They couldn't run forever. Eventually, he'd definitely trip and fall. As long as he was to be behind him, he would definitely stumble. And soon his wish was fulfilled. Whoa! The man who stepped into something and lost his balance was no longer able to keep bear the way of the boy dropping him. I guess that guy not honestly didn't care about the perpetrator at all. It just allowed to see the show the safety of, safety of the Toshi Ginyu guy. So that the perpetrator ran out by himself it was perfectly acceptable. But I see that Toshi Ginyu guy was important to the man as well and then like just ran away empty handed. I guess I could know to do in this kind of situation. His first priority should be probably be the assurance that safety of a boy is subduing his character being less important. Grappling the perpetrator wasn't something he planned on. Most likely it was either do or die. I guess I could spell well in the decision was proved to be fatal. That man's aiming right between the rather for both of Akasaka's eyes struck without a jab, without out the jab. No one that Akasaka raised both his hands to shield his face at that moment, the man kicked at his unguarded midsection. The pain almost felt like his vital organs were being squeezed out of his body, but he lashed out to the opponent's leg. But his opponent didn't hesitate one bit, leading with his sized foot. The man jumped at Akasaka, applying pressure down on him. Akasaka was unable, unable to withstand that it fell, but under no circumstances was he letting that leg go. Then two men fell together in a tangled heap. The man was stressed with the pull his leg free from Akasaka, where him and falling in awkward position was unable to. The two of them rolled around on the ground, fluttering about trying to gain an advantage, but Akasaka, who was holding onto his opponent's knees, on uh, knee with both hands, and the opponent, who had a complete freedom to move his separate body, were in two completely different situations. The man gained a positional advantage on Akasaka, who was still latched onto his leg, and couldn't move away, and his bound full force on his head with both his fists. Not only that, it's found a rock nearby and a beat against Akasaka's skull. Thwak, thwak, thwak. The difference between being a hit with the fist and being hit with the rock was vast. Akasaka quickly thought of letting go of the man's leg to free his hands to protect his head. But if he let go here, the man would get away. If he didn't dig in here, everything would be for naught. The boy he was trying to save was right there. He was going to save him and go back to Tokyo. If you could do that, it would be goodbye to this freakish village. Bam, crack, good. Without looking, I could tell my forehead had split open and was gushing blood. But I didn't let go of the man's leg. How could I? I won't let go. When the man realized that no matter how much he beat my head, he was like getting away. He used both his hands to grab my throat as if to crush my windpipe. I pulled my head back as a slight form of resistance, but it was of no use. The man's hands enveloped my neck and began to crush it like a vice. It was less about the pain of not being able to breathe so much, so much as it was choking so hard. I felt like I was going to throw up. It felt like my stomach was going to turn itself inside out, but I could only endure it. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, my throat hurts, I want to go, I want to, can go, I didn't want to be here, I wanted to resolve this and go back to Tokyo. I'll go back to Tokyo, I'll go talk to Yuki, all about our unborn trial. We are going to talk about our bright future. I know it's just loosening in my grip, however, at least it just a bit, the man's like free. The man kicked as hard as possible, I tumbled backwards. My head was spinning, I was unable to get up right away. No, I couldn't even put any strength into the game in the first place, even so I couldn't back down. If I let him escape now, there was a chance to never come again. And we just got to the same was not this short of a miracle. If we weren't able to get that man's grandson back here, there wouldn't be another chance. That man tried to drag the boy to his feet, but the kid was displaying some unexpected resistance. And allowed me to get it up, I noticed. I grasped the rock that man had just beat me over the head with. Now it's my turn. Yarg. The rock should be able to slip up more mega strength that I had left, adding more than enough power to my attack. My fist still wrapped around the rock, dug into the side hands the side of the torso. It seemed like it hurt him quite a bit. Ugh. Yeah. The man rolled around from a bit clutching his side. Free for the man skipped the boy behind, behind, behind me. So she gave you guy, right? I come to help you. The boy to those who were where he was waiting for the most. But the crisis was still not over. That was because even though he was still clutching his side, the man who had gotten up again had taken a fighting stance. I could see in the man's eyes who was it meant at the pain that caused him and the confidence that he could still beat me. If he were to clash head on again, he might not even stop if my head were split open. 
Stop resisting, sir, and quietly. You should send the boy over. Do you want me to stop your neck? Well, you will lose some you now. Reinforcements are already on their way. There's still more for you to run. The man reacted aversively to the word reinforcements. It was because he now knew that arguing like this wasn't just a waste of time, but put him closer and closer to danger. Realizing that the man shifted their mental gears almost too quickly, they must finish it fast. How about this? Blah. The man pulled from his back pocket. It was all the things. A gun. Of course, I'm a police officer. I suck. I don't know what a gun is. But having one pointing at me was something I had never experienced before. Was it real? Of course it was. There's no way to be a replica in a situation like this. Put both of your hands behind your head and lay down quietly. Don't get cocky, you villain. I won't do anything you say. You stupid idiot. Do you not know what to say? This without me shooting you with it? Then shoot. You know, of course, if we hear the gun try head right over here. Are you stupid? You're laying in the middle of our forest on top of that. It's raining. They'll never hear a thing. As long as he still yelled that gun, no matter how much I yelled at him, I was at a distinct disadvantage. But I saw the fighting chance. If I were in his shoes, instead of just wasted time yelling at each other like this, I would just shoot him and take the boy. That was the fastest way into would suppress any sort of further resistance. Resistance from him, but the man was demanding my surrender after having this fire shot. I mean, he either didn't want to shoot or couldn't. In other words, the man in front of me was soft. If I could buy just a little more time, that fact would lead to my victory were numerous. Or she was probably on his way, and the reinforcements he called for before coming here would already be well on their way too. Not only that, they should have begun at the local police box. Without a doubt, somebody stationed in the village would be here quicker than that. Damn man, do I have to put? Put a bullet and you to understand how dangerous this thing is. There's no escape. Don't add to your crimes. That moment I heard the rest of the four like heavy footsteps approaching. If Oishi was coming here, it was a whole new ball game. The man couldn't have more than one gun. The Oishi son. Over here, over here. Huh? I thought that was on my side. But I felt to even imagine that the enemy could have reinforcements. It uh, just appeared one of the perpetrators of shoes by looking at him. What are you doing? You know how you have the police all get here. Stop them all the gagging. Damn it. I'm gonna wish you started now, chubby fella. He's down for the count. He, 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 is he? Damn it. The boy sits up to them, put in danger, cold up behind my back. How could this be, damn it? Your buddy's a cop and he serves you right. Shoes on the other foot now. As I back up against a large tree while still protecting the boy, it's like everyone else will pull out a gun. Won't be saying this twice. Put your hands on your head and lie down. I refuse. Bang. Bang. As I shot in the protest, blood he ripped it from my left shoulder. I think a few moments ago, just that I've been shot. Compared to that one in the movies and TV dramas, the first time with guns I heard was set on mundane. In fact, it sounds a bit more akin to the small fireworks I used to buy from the corner as a kid. But there's no comparing the pain. There's a fear you only knew after being shot. Ah, uh -huh. sir, are you okay? Are you okay? The boy in confusion tucked in my clothes, agitating the wound even further. I wanted to put a bold face and reassure him my voice was hoarse with that opposite effect. I'm alright, I've already called for backup. There'll be a full squad here soon, yeah. It'll be quicker to put your hand through your LA before it comes to get here. But if family said no need this killing, so I'm taking it easy on you. Don't mess with me, you already know the back. This was bad, it felt very, very bad. Just a second, it was a completely different beast than the first. He no signs of indecisiveness or mercy. He's this that man said he'd shoot, he'd shoot. He was a somebody that a man like me could buy time from. I really hated him, it, but at that moment, the image of Yuki's smiling face crossed the back of my mind. I knew what that meant. I was wondering myself not to throw my life away over a matter of pride. Of course, I didn't want to die here. I was just starting a new life with Yuki, and I wanted to see the face of our soon to be born child. Why should I risk my life for some minister's grandson when I have such a critical injunction in my own life? I heard Damon, damn it. I need to stop rambling on myself, so what do I do now? Give up the boy and extend my own life? What a good idea. Everybody's life is precious. My own life is a danger. Nobody will blame me. Uh, the day it hurts. It hurts. If I had known it would be this painful, I wouldn't have gone and played the tough guy. My biggest miscalculation, though, was the sound of the gunshot was far quieter than I imagined. It was only that loud that it would be drawn up by the rainforest. It was just something that somebody far away could hear. Damn it, do it just wait. I don't want to die. I don't want to kill you so long as you understand. Don't shoot, okay? Don't shoot. I have a wife waiting for me at home. I don't want to die. I want you as long as you do it. You don't have to just quietly put your hand in the air and lie down. Will you really? Will you really? You'll keep your promise. Try this with a promise between men. I will. So a promise between men. Keep your promise. Keep it. I'm going to get down the ground, okay? I'm getting down. I'll keep my promise. So stop pointing my gun at me. You're still thinking of shooting me, aren't you? You want to shoot me, don't you? When I get down on the ground, you're just going to shoot me in the back of the head, aren't you? I'm all, I'm all fine. I'll put it away. I'll put the gun away. So problems between men, there are no problems now, right? Yeah, absolutely. No complaints. Yeah, ugh. 
It was over in a flash. The moment he lowered his gun, when she didn't let him slip by, which had been assisted in the situation for quite some time from behind the two men. But since there, the gun straight on me, he didn't even have a chance to jump in. Seeing the look on Oishi's face indicating that he wanted me to create an opening, I took on that role completely. Oishi forced me to lift that arm that was holding the gun. Then he took the gun from the man's hand and only an instant. Another man who was a bit slow and grasping what was happening, pointing his gun at them, but with his ally tri- grappling with Oishi, he couldn't pull the trigger. If that man was someone that was wrestling with Oishi at that moment, he might have shot without hesitation. But this man would have shoot, he could have shoot. Oishi kicked the other bit away while even the stolen gun with his left hand pulled out his own. With a gun to Kimbo, he was aiming at both men at the same time. I do believe this trick, mate. It was perfectly played, but he just saw this guy's pointing at them. The man shot a scream as they scared away at full speed. It was over in an instant. The two running away without bringing the fight was honestly unexpected. Or she quietly be clicking his tongue and let the monster man slip both guns into his parents' pockets. Just those guys, you know their stuff. What do you mean? An officer won't fire at somebody who's fleeing, and I want to keep my prom- pension here. Oishi and I grin at each other. Are you t- are you told that Toshi any guy, the grandson of the Minnesota construction, any guy? Yes, this was a major incident, and we probably only got the tail off the loser, though. <laughs> Oishi smiled amusedly. The fact that Oishi only gives you defense lines, or rather, there's someone lucky falling behind them, was pulling strength, though it was apparent, but proving it wouldn't be easy. With, and with the apologies to Oishi, this incident was unlikely to go public. If it's caused enough for it, it would obviously lead to Mr. Losing his office. With HQ having decided this is going, this is doing so, blah, blah, blah. With HQ having decided that doing so was in the national interest, this would probably be cleaned up quietly. It might be a rough way of saying that, but this was born in the shadows, and was going to die in the shadows. Oishi probably already understood the implications behind this incident. For the time being, let's cordon off the area. Since it seems one of them still has a gun, and after that, let's get a new guy coming to the safety and get to the hospital. And his attention and situation fitted the pain from the gunshot wound, the shoulder lost him once again. My forehead was also stunning and painfully, stinging painfully, and had grown hot enough to start a fire. Taking attention caused me to sweat. I wet my forehead, but what came off was a large amount of blood. I realized that I should have been stained bright crimson from the blood flowing from my head. I turned around, but boy, it was safe for certain, without a doubt. It would, it would probably be an investigation on the man who ran away, but that was for another day. It cleared the major hurdle of securing the boy's safety. As soon as I recognized that, I felt like the last of my head has been hit by a power failure. My knees buckled up underneath me in the ground, and there fell as soft as a cloud. It didn't feel unpleasant, even as I was covered in the rain soaked the mud. I wish he'd clean closer as if I was okay, but somehow I couldn't tell. I turned off the switch to the last line in my head. Exhaustion involved in his sleep. Except that it was something that it looked like it wrapped around me. Oh, so this is probably the longest video yet on this Higurashi specifically. Um, uh, very kind first thing. Thank you guys, thanks for watching. Um, I might get to bed is um after I upload this. It's almost midnight, 22. Okay guys, I'll see y'all later.